Hello everyone and welcome to a most impressive game that was played yesterday as part of Carlson's banter blitz session on chess.com. Uh, his opponent is uh, Brazilian Grandmaster Luis Paulo Supi and it's quite the game as the title suggests uh, and also features the Scandinavian defense which makes it even better. So let's just uh, dive straight into it. Uh, uh, Supi with the white piece opens with e4 and the Magnus goes for his Scandinavian defense with the d5. Uh, we have e captures on d5, uh, queen captures and knight to f3. So not immediately kicking, kicking away the queen with knight to c3, which is uh, what most people do, but first knight to f3. So maybe you're going to kick it away, maybe not, maybe you're going to play d4, c4, uh, we'll see what happens. So Magnus takes this opportunity to go bishop to g4, immediately pinning the knight, uh, threatening bishop captures, which would ruin, uh, of course, white's pawn structure, uh, and bishop to e2, not allowing that. So now if bishop captures, this bishop can just recapture. Knight to c6, uh, this is black's usual plan of development, you want to uh, go bishop g4, knight c6, you want to play e5, you want to castle queen side, uh, and if the queen is under attack, you want to bring the queen back to d6. However, here, after knight to c3, the bishop has al already been developed, so it's a uh, bit of a different move order than when you immediately attack the queen, and usually the queen will go to d6, but now, as the bishop has already been developed, uh, just queen to d7. So h3, challenging the bishop, uh, and here Magnus trades, captures, captures, and now uh, Magnus castles queen side. Supi castles king side, uh, and now uh, we have castles of opposite sides, much like in the game of uh, XQC versus Nakamura. So uh, the plan is simple, white will attack here, and black will of course try uh, and uh, do some damage um, uh, on, the, on the king side. Uh, and here the position has already been reached. In a most notable game in 2009, Alexander Morozevich had it against Vladimir Kramnik. Kramnik played uh, e5 here and he was able to win that game. Uh, but Magnus goes for the immediate knight d4. He challenges the bishop here and it does make sense. It's a very strong bishop. So he wants to gobble it up. Uh, and it is of course as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So, uh, Supi starts his expansion on the queen side, a4, uh, knight to b5 is the idea, uh, which is which is very often played, as in this line of the Scandinavian black will more, more often than not castle queen side. So, even if uh, black plays a6, there are some games where knight can be played to b5, uh, sacrifice the knight to open up the file for the rook. Uh, uh, I think we covered one such game, it was also a blitz game between uh, uh, Alireza Firuja and the Magnus, where Alireza went for this sacrifice. And the Magnus didn't accept it in the end, the Magnus won. Uh, and okay, king to b8, a nice prophylactic move, uh, and now knight to b5. So the knight is now uh, nicely placed there, and the thing is, if you go for it, if you try and grab the pawn, captures, captures, and captures, then you open up the a-file for the rook, rook a3 followed by rook to b3 will be an idea, and it will already be very uncomfortable for black, and this is a blitz game, you do not want to be under attack. So Magnus instead eliminates the strong uh, light square bishop uh, with check, we have queen captures and now a6 pushing the knight back. Uh, but now uh, Supi of course uh, uh, does not move the knight, uh, it's pretty much the same as if a6 was already here and then you played it, tried to sacrifice it, so here he doesn't move it, he just goes c4. And uh, even though even though the engines like uh, a captures on b5, uh, as a human you 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 usually don't go for this. So Magnus uh, instead continues developing e5. Now the bishop can be developed uh, and d4 now. Uh, challenging the spawn, uh, but also freeing up the f4 square for the bishop if Magnus decides to capture, which he does. He grabs the pawn, e captures on d4, and now bishop to f4, putting pressure uh, on the pawn here, and uh, bishop to d6 isn't really all that great because you really ruin your uh, uh, pawn structure in front of your king, uh, so instead Magnus now decides to capture, a captures on b5. With a captures on b5, now uh, you've opened up the file for the rook, and now Magnus goes bishop to d6, which uh, isn't all that great for black, but for a blitz game it's uh, it's very hard to find the absolute uh, most precise move, uh, but here uh, there actually exists a c5 in the position, it's just very strong because, uh, well, whatever you do, b6 is coming, and b6 is very strong, whether you capture here or you capture here, b6 is still coming, and it's just, uh, just a very strong idea, for example, bishop captures queen a3, and there is no and there is no stopping this, you cannot make room for the king, the, the, the pawn is pinned, so it's just game over. 
Uh, however, Supi went for rook to a2. His idea is he wants to play rook f to a1 and then deliver checkmate on a8. And okay, Magnus goes queen to f5, which is uh, which is a good move as it attacks the bishop twice now and also creates a breeding room for the king so you can uh, run away to the king side if needed. So rook f to a1 threatening rook to a8 checkmate and now of course uh, if you capture you just get checkmated so magnus needs to move the king he goes king to c8 uh, but uh, even though it looks like now uh, black defended his king can escape you can just capture the, uh, the bishop here feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute winning move for uh, for supi while i give you a couple of seconds uh, and have the title of the video in mind while you, while you're looking for it So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the king's escape route uh, involves the d7 square. So for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to c6. Uh, a most beautiful queen sacrifice. You use the queen to and not allow the king to reach the d7 square. And it was actually in this position on move 18 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, most obvious choice, of course, is what happens if you capture the queen. Uh, not much. Uh, the pawn still prevents the king from escaping and also guards b7. So next move, whatever you play, rook to a8 is checkmate. There's, there, there, there's no move that even prolongs the game. Like there are, of course, silly moves like maybe queen b1 check. But other than that, uh, rook to a8 is completely winning on the next move. And if you don't play uh, after queen to c6, if you don't capture the queen... Uh, there's no other move you can play. Like any move you play, you just lose. There's no way to jump over the rook, even if there was uh, the queen guards e8, so even that is uh, impossible. Uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of you were saying that uh, in the previous video, Nakamura versus XQC, that uh, of course it lasted for only 16 moves, uh, but here it only lasted for 18 moves. So as you can see, it, ca it can happen to anyone, and chess definitely is a game for everyone. So uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of you uh, requested it, so I thought, why not? The, after I saw it, I thought, uh, <laughs> I uh, thought to myself, of course, yes, we are, we are definitely going to show this one. It's uh, quite the game. Uh, I would like to thank the, I, I would like to thank uh, Cohen Eid of Center, Fred Ackerman, Salvador Albanese, Dustin Van Viersel, and Dennis Myers for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And Dennis also sent me a, a very moving message, and uh, I asked him if it was okay to share it with you guys. I, I really thought it was uh, just very moving. So here it is. Uh, if you want, you can even pause the video to read it. Uh, but uh, I, I could even read it. He says, Hey, Agad Matur, I recently got back into chess after 10 years of not playing. Uh, my father taught me and my sisters how to play chess from a young age. Over the years, he got very sick and was confined to lying in bed, but he never stopped watching chess and following the latest matches. Uh, last year, he passed away. Now that uh, I'm getting back in chess, I recognize your YouTube videos as the thing my dad was always watching. This donation is for your great content, and thanks for helping my dad. Uh, stay entertained with the game he loved. So there you have it. Uh, uh, like I said, I thought it was just a very moving message. So I, I, I thought I'd share it with you guys. And I'm sure uh, I'm very glad that Dennis is also uh, uh, Dustin is also getting back in, in, into chess. And I'm sure that his dad would uh, would have enjoyed that very much. So yeah, uh, once again, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, Lindoris Abbey, checking up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one, uh, and as usual, uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.